thought I would do um, a little podcast on the letter from John Steinbeck, the writer of the novella of Mice and Men, uh, to Claire Luce. So basically the background to this letter is that Claire Luce was the first actress to play Curly's wife um, in the play. She was unsure how to play Curly's wife. She was unsure whether to, to play her as the jail bait, as the tramp side of the character, or whether to play her as a victim, as a lonely girl who had nowhere to run. So, um, through Anne Laurie, who they talk about here, John Steinbeck wrote a letter to the actress, giving her some tips on his opinions of his own character. So I'll read it through and I'll comment at various times. So, to Claire Luce and Los Gatos, 1938. So, when and where it was, um, when it was written. Dear Mrs. Luce, Anne Laurie says you're worried about your playing of the part of Curly's wife. Although, from the reviews, it appears that you're playing it marvellously. I'm deeply grateful to you and the others in the cast for your feeling about the play. You have surely made it much more than it was by such a feeling. About the girl. I don't know, of course, what you think about her, but perhaps if I should tell you a little bit about her, as I know her, it might clear your feeling about her. She grew up in an atmosphere of fighting and suspicion. Quite early she learned that she must never trust anyone, but she was never able to carry out what she learned. A natural trustfulness broke through constantly, and every time it did, she got her. Her moral training was most rigid. She was told over and over again that she must remain a virgin because that was the only way she could get a husband. This was harped on so often that it became a fixation. It would have been impossible to seduce her. She had only that one thing to sell and she knew it. So straight away we can maybe see Curly's wife in a slightly different light. So the idea that over and over she was told that she must keep her virginity but still use her body, still the idea of sex is very much um, something that she can use as power over men. Now, she was trained by threat not only at home but or by other kids and any show of fear or weakness brought an instant persecution. She learned to be hard to cover a fright and automatically she became hardest when she was most frightened. She is a knight, so she's a nice kind girl not a floozy. No man has ever considered her as anything except a girl to try to make, so to try to sleep with. She has never talked to a man except in a sexual fencing conversation, so that means flirting. She's not highly sexed particularly, but knows instinctively that if she's to be noticed at all, it will be because someone finds her sexually desirable. So, again, we can see the character traits of Curly's wife. So it's very interesting that she's never talked to a man except when she's flirting and Steinbeck is saying that she is this woman is only noticed when men find her sexually desirable. So it seems pretty logical that if this girl, because remember she's a girl, we don't think she's any more than 19, if this girl who's craving, who's absolutely dying for attention, she knows that she can get it if men find her sexually desirable. And because of this, we could probably infer from this this is the reason why she does how she what she does she acts like she acts she appears how she appears it's also interesting for you um, that Steinbeck this sentence here she is a nice kind girl not a floozy so the key part there is not a floozy so a lot of you during our conversations have merely said to me she's a tramp um, she's a tart she's just after men that's all she's want so straight away we can probably see there's a probably softer side to this and also reasons behind our actions. So back to the text. As to her actual sex life, she has had none except with Curly and there's probably been no consummation there since Curly would not consider her gratification and would probably be suspicious if she had any. So that basically means that she may not even had sex with Curly but if, if she has it probably hasn't been very fulfilling or it's just been once or twice. And the idea that she's not considered gratification is probably the reason why Curly goes to see prostitutes. So that's the kind of girl he's after, someone who's just into sex and there's no emotion. Also, consequently, she's a little starved means that although she may be playing the front as this sexual vixen, it's probably not the case. 
She knows utterly nothing about sex except the mass misinformation girls tell one another. If anyone, a man or woman, ever gave her a break, treated like a person, she would be a slave to that person. Her craving for contact is immense, but she, with her background, is incapable of conceiving any contact without some sexual context. With all this, if you knew her, if you could ever break down a thousand little defences she has built up, you would find a nice person, an honest person, and you would end up by loving her, but such a thing could never happen. So this part is actually really interesting, because for two-thirds or three-quarters of the novel, we are told that she's a tart, she's after men, she's given men the eye, any man on the ranch by talking to her could end up in trouble because she's seen as this sexual deviant. But in fact, Steinbeck is telling us that actually she's not very experienced at all, but the main reason she's doing it is that Steinbeck is saying is that she's craving for attention so much that if, any actually, if anyone did speak to her, she would probably follow that person to the end of the world. Um, I hope you don't think I'm preaching. I've known this girl and I'm trying to tell you what she's like. She's afraid of everyone. You've known girls like that, haven't you? You can see them in Central Park on a hot night. They travel in groups for protection. They pretend to be wise and hard and voluptuous. I have a feeling that you know all this and you're just doing all this. Please forgive me if I seem to intrude in your job. I don't intend to. I'm only writing this because Anne Laurie said you wondered about the girl. It's a devil of a hard part. I'm very happy you have it. Sincerely, John Steinbeck. So this is basically just him ending, just nice tease and beginning and ending the letter in a nice way. So generally, this is a really interesting piece. Hopefully you found it interesting, especially if you're one of the people who had the viewpoint that Curly's wife is a tart and there's not much to her. All she's there is to further the plot and just be someone who's going to be a danger for the men. So hopefully it's showing you the other side and what Steinbeck was trying to come across where if we look towards the end of the novel just before Lenny unfortunately kills her, that is the real Curly's wife coming out. Okay, so um, any questions about this let me know and we'll chat about it in, in, the, um, in the lesson.